Hello, everybody. Welcome to our new and latest episode of Cities Speak. I'm Clarence Anthony, your host and CEO and executive director of the National League of Cities. And today we have a guest who I have been looking forward to talking with for a while. I see him normally at conferences and other events. But today you get a chance to talk to and hear a leader in America who is, I think, really special. And that is uh, Mayor John Giles of Mesa, Arizona, who we are thrilled to have on this episode of Cities Speak. Good afternoon, Mayor. How are you? I'm great, Clarence. Thank you. I, I'm uh, I'm honored that you would talk with me. I, I, I'm a big fan of yours. Appreciate the leadership you give to cities and all the support you give to, to people like me and my council members. Uh, we really uh, benefit a lot from our participation in NLC. Well, thank you so much. And uh, since the listeners don't know uh, as much as I know about you, I want to just talk about you for a few minutes. As I indicated, uh, Mayor Giles is the mayor of Mesa, Arizona, the third largest city for the last eight years in Arizona. And a lot has changed over those eight years uh, in our uh, environment and national politics. But one thing that has really been consistent is the mayor's leadership on the things that matter in his communities. We've seen, uh, Mayor, a lot of uh, dramatic change and incivility. uh, And people are growing more and more comfortable, I think, in terms of the decorum that we are used to uh, as a part of solving problems. And the mayor is one of those people, uh, though how he has led has been a role model for many of Americans and many of political figures throughout uh, America. So again, welcome to City Speak. And, and Mayor, I just want to get right in and ask. let's just have a conversation. Sounds like fun, Clarence. Thanks. I, these are all topics that, are, uh, that, I, that I'm passionate about. I know you are. And, and I, I think there's a lot of people involved in city government you know, that, that are in that, that middle of the, uh, the, of the country that are, are turned off by the partisanship and the negativity that we're seeing. And, and I think it's important that we, that we support each other and, and talk about that. So, Mayor, what was your journey uh, to getting uh, into public office? Uh, I know a little bit about it, and uh, I think it would be amazing if uh, listeners could really hear about how you decided to step up and be a part of leading your community. You know, I've always, Mesa, Arizona is my hometown. I was born and raised here, and so I've always been a, um, a partisan, you know, for my city. Uh, and uh, if people said mean things about them, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd object. And uh, so I always kind of was a, a hometown guy and uh, started a career as an attorney. And, but it, it, that allowed me to just be on city boards and committees and nonprofit boards. And I really got a lot of, uh, really appreciated that, really found a lot of uh, satisfaction in being engaged in the community. And that, so that led to me serving on our city council a long time ago. When I was a young man in my 30s, I, I did a term on our city council, and I felt like that was a wonderful experience. But I also felt like I'd, I'd exercised all of my political demons, and and uh, I, you know, I was done with that. But, but I continued to be active in the community and you know, United Way and a lot of other things. But then uh, an opportunity came up when when my predecessor resigned early to run for governor, and the city was kind of. I uh, think it, it, it kind of took some people off guard. And so they started scrambling to find somebody and <laughs> and they started to recruit me. And I, I said, I have zero interest in that, but I'll, I'll join the effort to find somebody. The, the, the problem occurred when, when uh, we weren't successful. And, and I finally allowed myself to, to, to ask myself the question, would I really like to do this? And, and I, I, I realized there's nothing I would rather do, right, than and work full time professionally to make my city a better place. I mean, that that would be my dream job, I realized. So that's when I was in trouble, when I when, when I had that <laughs> aha moment. And and that was uh, uh, so I was elected in 2014. And and thankfully for everyone, we have term limits in Mesa, Arizona. So uh, the end of uh, 2024, we'll, Mesa will get a new mayor. Oh, man. Uh, well, you know, oftentimes we look at that dash in when we start something. 
and when we end something, I think your dash is going to be really productive and you'll be able to look back and be proud of your start of public service. And uh, it'll never end, I will say, uh, your transition out of being mayor. But one of the things that you've been quoted several times saying is, uh, I love waking up knowing I'm working in a calling. What do you mean by that? And how has it impacted your journey in public service? Well, as I indicated, for most of my uh, professional life, I, I practiced law and, and I, I, I had some re- rewarding more moments and felt like I was contributing in that profession. But uh, I was judged in that profession by my income, you know, or by the cases I won or by, by criteria that now don't seem all that uh, important, you know, or, or, or that, uh, that really leave a mark. And uh, so th- that was a job. So I really admire people who, who choose to um, pursue a career in the public sector, you know, whether it's whether it's public safety or school teaching or or something along those lines where you're not you know, you don't measure your success by uh, your paycheck. You measure it by the lives that are impacted and by the good that you're able to do. That's exciting you know, for, for me to have uh, the opportunity to be involved in that type of a career is I've really enjoyed it. Um, and I think it's, you know, callings or sometimes we think of those positions more in, in the faith community. You know, uh, your pastor will say that he was called <laughs> to, to to be in his position. And I I'm afraid I, I have a, a similar feeling. I think, you know, uh, I, I, I've got a I don't have a spiritual calling, but I have a secular calling. But I think it's equally important to the to the work that people do in the faith community. You know, um, so that that's why I enjoy this job so much. I think that's an interesting um, segue into you know this concept of public service and being called in public service and wanting to really serve your community, your place, the home that you grew up in. Um, And I think that that is such an interesting way of of, uh, looking at uh, what leaders do. What is happening, however, in uh, the public sector right now, we're finding that 81% of most municipal officials are saying that they have been harassed or their family's been bullied, or, you know, they go to the grocery store and, you know, folks don't just say, how are you doing? They say, hey, what party are you from? And we've been seeing that over and over in America. And I really want to talk about how you have been able to honestly work across uh, political lines, party lines, uh, to deal with uh, working with Democrats and Republicans. You know, you've endorsed Democrats, you've endorsed Republicans. And I'd like to really ask you, how how has it been as a local leader representing your constituents during this this time? Uh, and and give, give us some advice, Mayor, because this is a tough time. Yeah, well, it, it's been a mixed bag. I, I've experienced all the things that you, that you described. Here, here's the most recent experience along those lines I have D- during this last uh, election, I, I did feel like I was compelled to, 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 uh, to endorse a, a, a democratic candidate for Senate and, and, and for governor in Arizona. Uh, and, and, and in a ho- high profile way, I mean, I was on uh, the TV <laughs> on a short loop, you know, and, and so my, and, and I was billed as the Republican mayor of Mesa, Arizona endorses, you know, these folks that are, from a different party. And so, as you can imagine, that infuriated a lot of partisan Republicans. Uh, and so there was, my staff will tell you, I, I got, uh, you know, 10, 20 to one, you know, negative e- emails from people saying very, <laughs> making, you know, not with, with very unambiguous messages about how they felt about me. Uh, on the other hand, in, in real life, uh, if I were, you know, in a, in a, in an airport or walking down the street, I couldn't go five feet and strangers would be stopping me saying, thank you so much, you know, for, uh, for giving voice to this idea that, that choosing the right person is more important than supporting a political party. So it's, 
I think there's a real appetite. You know, there's a real um, people want to uh, to embrace uh, the, the idea that the country and, and your state and your city are more important than any loyalty to a political party. So uh, I think sometimes we underestimate the, the, the grassroots support for that notion. And I, I think, uh, you know, you, you hit on something really important, and that is it's going to take leadership. It's going to take uh, making the right decisions on behalf of your residents and what is right, which is the right candidate around policy. And what we're finding, uh, Mayor, is that, you know, little things now uh, that we thought were little, a mask, uh, vaccination, uh, those kind of issues have started to separate us uh, in a way that it wasn't traditionally. Making your types of decisions related to, I got to do the right thing. What, what kind of process do you go through to get there? Well, I, I don't think either party has a has a monopoly on on being right or wrong. So I, I am quick to, uh, probably like most of, of the folks that, that you work with at, at NLC, I, I'm elected in a, in a nonpartisan election. And the, 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 the issues that compelled me to pursue this, you know, were, were, were not, not tied to political party causes. You know, it was, it was the things that impact my quality of life at, at the city level. So I'm sure there are people in, in local politics that aspire to, you know, have, have careers uh, after this in uh, where they're going to have to compete in, in partisan primaries. And I feel sorry for them because uh, unless they, that's who they truly are, that's going to be a miserable experience, you know, moving from working on real life issues to, you know, this zero sum, you know, game that is, that is partisan politics. Thankfully, you know, as, as a rule, I try to avoid uh, partisan issues and uh, and contentious issues. I, I, I've got so much on my plate as the mayor of the city, you know, de- solving nonpartisan issues that and, and my, my council, you know, is I've got I've got very progressive Democrats and very Repu- uh, conservative Republicans on my council. And we get along wonderfully. And, and, and we just we don't you know, there's so much to do. Why would we get into the weeds on things that we're going to disagree on? Nearly every day of my time as mayor, I've been able to just sidestep all of that contention and, and focus on getting things done that we all agree on. Uh, but there have, has been occasion where I, I, you know, I felt compelled to speak out on on things that that are going to upset people in a partisan way. Yeah, we we see that all over. And, and what is starting as well uh, is this whole notion that I didn't sign up for this. And that uh, yeah. when I ran for office, I ran to deal with uh, crime, housing, uh, be able to deal with the issues of poverty. And um, I think the bipartisan route in America right now is, in fact, causing us to lose some of the brightest and best, if you will, because um, I think uh, sure. we're finding that, that they say, I don't want to do this any longer. Any advice that you can give to local leaders who feel like they're caught between a rock and a hard place as a as a leader? Don't know who to who to give credit to this, uh, but I, I heard a while back that you know people will support something that they feel like they've helped to create, uh, and so there have been times when I would you know go to an NLC meeting and I, I would hear a solution that's happening in another city, and I'd see oh this is. I need to bring this home, you know, and I need to I need to steal this idea for my uh, it, it's a perfect fit. And I knew that if I came back to the Mesa City Council chambers and said, hey, I'm the mayor, you know, follow behind me and I'll lead us up this hill. And here's here's my press release on, you know, my the less the, 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 this great idea I have. People are going to roll their eyes and they're going to say this is going to be fun to watch this guy, you know, fall on his face. But if I come back and I and I you know have some convenings and I suggest other people, here's an idea. What do you think? Do you want, you know, do you want to play a role? Do you want to help us dig into this? You know, I, I create some, if five or six people think this is their idea, man, that, that there's a hundred percent likelihood that's going to, that, that thing is going to be successful. So I would just remind all of us that local politics, particularly is a team sport. Uh, and a lot of these ideas that there, it, if you don't care who gets the credit for them, Man, that that's a great place to start, uh, and and try to get as broad a base of support as you possibly can. 
uh, involve every constituency you can think of and, and get, get every member of your council to think that this is their idea and, uh, and they're going to be receiving all the credit if it's successful. That is true. That's a good uh, piece of advice. It's uh, interesting, in addition, that the role of mayor uh, causes you to be uh, more of the face of whatever is good and whatever is bad. And uh, the whole concept of bringing along your council and bringing along your community on your vision is really, really uh, great advice. My, My predecessor said the same thing. He said, in the end, you're going to get the, <laughs> you're the mayor. And so uh, you're going to be judged by uh, the outcome. You're going to be re- judged by whether, you know, where you are at the end. So give, all, you know, give all the, the, the success away that you can and, and just know that ultimately when, after all the dust settles, if, if good things have, ha- have happened, people will be grateful to you. Well, I want to give you an opportunity uh, to, to tell our subscribers uh, why should they move to Mesa? Why, what is special about uh, Mesa, Arizona. And it's funny, uh, I say that because I've never met a mayor that did not say, my city is the best city. They used to say in America. Now they say in the world. So what's what's special about Mesa, Arizona? Oh, thanks, Clarence. Um, like I said, I, I'm I'm very partisan uh, a supporter of my community. I was born and raised here, and, and it's what my love of this community is what 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 drove me to to pursue this position. I started doing a podcast called "It's Always Cool in Mesa," where I kind of tell these uh, these aha moments that I've had, where I'm sitting doing something and I realize I, I couldn't be doing this anywhere else. You know, this is something that's uniquely uh, attractive about my city, or, or th- this is a, a, an insight or a story or you know something about our character that uh, I, I need to kind of do a deep dive on and explain to people why, uh, why it, it's cool. It, we, I, I kind of joke around that in, in Mesa, we're kind of proud of our humility. You know, we're, we're not great at going out and bragging about why we're better than anybody else. That, that I don't think we think we're better than anybody else, but, but we are fiercely loyal because uh, there is a lot to like about our community. Right now, we're the center of the universe because the, the Super Bowl is, uh, is going to be uh, down the road. Uh, short, you know, Glendale, where we're all part of the Phoenix metro area. Uh, the Waste Management Phoenix Open is happening right now. The whole world in, in uh, another month or two will have, well, another month we'll have spring training. So for the next few months, uh, it, I don't need to try to convince anyone that Mesa and Phoenix is a great place. We're going to be, uh, the, the whole world is, is beating a path, you know, to come and, and experience uh, our communities. But uh, and, and so we're certainly a part of that as being a part of the Phoenix area. But uh, I, I think Mesa is special. All, and every, every mayor will say this. We, I think our, our, the, the level of our compassion, the level of our uh, we're, we're a great combination of, of a, a city that needs help. We've got plenty of poverty, plenty of issues that we need to address. But we combine that with, a, I think, an oversized dose of people who feel a sense of calling, like we talked about earlier, to serve and to, to help. And so uh, I'm constantly humbled, you know, when I reach out to the to the community, asking them to help uh, start a college promise program or or do something, you know, big, a big lift that requires significant response. My community comes through every time. Uh, so I'm, I'm very proud of that. Well, I want to say to our listeners uh, at City Speak, um, we are getting really good advice from Mayor. Giles. I mean, he's not just sharing it, but he's living it and he's modeling um, uh, real leadership in a difficult time. As I said before, one of our goals uh, is to bring um, leaders that are going to help municipal leaders and our country stay motivated about public service. And clearly what we've heard today helps us to be able uh, to think positively about the future and Mayor, you know, one of the other goals we have is that we want to make sure we lift up the positive things so that kids will go to college and say, I want to major in public administration or public sector law. 
Uh, and so these stories are very important. And I don't know if you have any thoughts about how important uh, lifting up public service is. I get I'm blessed with the opportunity to talk to young people a lot. And, and one of the things I consistently say is I encourage them to look at a career in public service, you know, well, it, it, this calling rather than this job that we talked about. And people sometimes don't realize that 90 percent of the services that they receive in a, for their tax dollars and uh, are come from local government. Right. I mean, I, I'm a very loyal, patriotic American, and I'm glad we have an aircraft carrier, but it's not every day that I need an aircraft carrier. But every day I do need uh, my plumbing to work and streets to drive on and uh, my garbage to get picked up. So uh, it, it's fun to, to point out to young people, hey, you want to be an engineer? You want to be, I mean, pick, pick a profession. I've got several of those that work for the city of Mesa. Uh, and there's some real uh, uh, lifestyle advantages and uh, just quality of life and, and mental health at, you know, advantages to, to choosing a career, a, a service career that's tied to local government. Well, Mayor, thank you so much for joining us today and spending time with us to talk about who you are, um, how you serve, how you stand up for your residents, but most of all, just uh, the humility that you reflect and your feeling about public service is uh, contagious And uh, I hope that you'll continue to uh, remain engaged locally, nationally, because it seems like Mesa is a cool place uh, to be and visit. So y'all come to visit Mesa anytime. And thanks again, Mayor. Let let me know if you need any uh, spring training tickets if you make it out in February and March. Oh, man, I may have to do that. So uh, don't block my call. (laughs) Tell Tell your staff to let me through but uh, I may take you up on that. Please do. Thanks for the opportunity to chat, Clarence. Thank you, guys. City Speak with Mayor Giles from Mesa, Arizona. Thank you all. Thanks for listening to City Speak with Clarence Anthony. If you like the show, let us know. Share this episode with your friends and make sure to subscribe. We're curious to hear what you think, what you want more of, and how we can improve. If you have feedback or an idea for a guest you'd like Clarence to sit down with, send us your thoughts at citiespeakpodcast at nlc.org. Join us next month for a new episode. Like and subscribe here or wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time.